The text that I uh, chose for the Father's Day message is uh, Proverbs 14, 26. In the NIV, which is the Bible that we have here in our, uh, in our pews, uh, it says it this way, He who fears the Lord has a secure fortress, and for his children it will be a refuge. In this case, I, I kind of like the King James reading even better. It says it this way, The fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. It was one year ago, on Father's Day, that Ruth and I arrived in Delisle. And I was installed as the pastor of the Delisle Community Chapel Congregation. Wow, how quickly the time passes. Uh, one year ago, I didn't know very many of you all, just a very few of you. And uh, now, one year later, I can't imagine not having you as my friends. So uh, this Father's Day marks a milestone for us personally as well as for our church family. As I began to think about a message for Father's Day, something that would be helpful to all of us, but especially to those who are dads, I uh, found myself drawn to Proverbs 14, 26. Um, it's, it's just such a profound verse when you stop and think about it. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Kind of sounds like a, a contradiction in terms, doesn't it? In fear, <laughs> there's confidence. And not only that, but it will be a source of strength and refuge for our children. John Piper said, if daddy is afraid, where can a little child turn? Daddies are supposed to be safe. They are supposed to know what to do and how to solve problems and fix things. And most of all, how to protect the children from harm. But what happens when a child sees fear in daddy's face? What if daddy is as scared as the child and doesn't know what to do? Then the child is utterly distraught and feels panicked. He feels that the one strong and good and reliable place of safety is no longer safe. But if daddy is confident, then the children have a refuge. If daddy is not panicking, but calm and steady, all the walls can come tumbling down, and all the waves can break, and all the snakes hiss, and the lions roar, and the winds blow, and there will still be a safe place in daddy's arms. Daddy is a refuge as long as daddy is confident. Well, Proverbs 14, 26, that the children will have a refuge as long as the father has strong confidence. Daddy's confidence is a refuge for the children. Dads, it's not just about you. Your confidence in God is a source of security for your children. And may I say, for those of you who are grandparents, for your grandchildren. So how do you get this strong confidence? How do you overcome your own anxieties and your doubts and your fears so that you can be a source of strength for your family? You know, in the Bible, it says 366 times, fear not. That's one for every day of the year, even leap year. So what do you do when you feel fearful? Do you just put on a brave face and fake it? That really doesn't solve the problem, does it? It may give you ulcers. You all know that I'm a rather enthusiastic motorcyclist. No. <laughs> I have had the opportunity on uh, more than one occasion to attend uh, a class with a man by the name of Reg Fridmore. Now this class is a little different than your average classroom, but takes place on a racetrack. Reg Pridmore is a former American Motorcycle Association Superbike Champion. In fact, he won three consecutive Superbike Championships. And he teaches classes to people on how to operate a motorcycle safely at speed. Now this takes place on a closed course in a safer environment. We're not talking about speeding on the highway here. But it does take a certain amount of courage and it, and it 
probably uh, generates a certain amount of fear when you begin to ride a motorcycle at more than twice the legal limit of any highway in Canada. One of the things that he stresses to people is this, don't panic. He says it's almost impossible to crash if you don't panic first. If you can manage your fears, you're unlikely to have a crash. <coughs> now, what is true for riding a motorcycle is also true for life. If you can manage your fears, you're unlikely to crash. But again, how do you gain the strong confidence that will enable you to overcome your fears? The Bible says that in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence. Now that sounds very strange. The key to overcoming fear is fear of the Lord. Does that mean that you should be scared of God? No, that is not what it means. You became his much-loved child when you accepted his son Jesus as your Lord and Savior and ask Him to forgive all of your sins. God wants to have a love relationship with you that is real and personal. God is a good, good Father. He loves you. He wants the best for you. So what does it mean to fear the Lord? Part of what it means is that you fear to dishonor Him. You fear to distrust him. You fear to disappoint him. When I was a grade 12 student at Delisle Composite School, I was part of a drama team. We put on a play that was really well received in the community, so much so that they uh, scheduled it and we did it again the second night uh, a week later. But I remember that uh, all of us who were part of that were feeling very, very excited about it. And uh, we decided we were going to have a cast party afterwards. And we went to the home of one of the students. And uh, for whatever reason, there were no parents home, which probably was not a good idea. And then uh, somebody got into the, uh, the liquor cabinet at the, uh, at the home. And uh, they started to... Share, share it around. But I live in a home where dad and mom had told me that as long as I lived under their roof, they didn't want me drinking alcoholic beverages. And I respected that. I accepted the fact that I was going to live by my dad's rules because I did not want to dishonor my father. You could say that I feared to dishonor my father. And uh, when I said no, it was interesting. Um, most of the kids who were there decided that they would also say no. And uh, I believe that that was probably a very good thing under the circumstances. On a recent vacation to Alaska, and by the way, we got here. A lot of miles, a lot of smiles, and uh, a number of bears to see you along the way. But uh, on that vacation trip, uh, I stopped at the uh, Our Savior Lutheran Cemetery near Hay Lakes, Alberta, at my father's gravesite. And I spent some time there thinking about that and uh, what he meant to me. And, how he had influenced my life over the years. He's been gone now for over six years. But you know something? I still want to live in a way that would please him. How much more do we fear to dishonor and disappoint our Heavenly Father? Because we love him, when he gives a command, we obey it. When he gives an assignment, we do it. Our Father says, So do not fear, for I am with you. 
Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's Isaiah 41, 10. And also, in verse uh, 13 of that same chapter, we read these words. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. And then in chapter 42, verse 6, it says again, I will take hold of your hand. Folks, I want you to picture it. God is holding your hand today. Many years ago, I was walking in the city with my son Eric, who was just a little fellow at that time. And uh, he, was, he was well able to walk on his own, but it was sometimes a bit of a challenge for him to keep up at that stage. And we came to the crossing of a, a busy street, uh, Central Avenue in Chino, California, where we were living at the time. I still remember. So I reached out and I took hold of his hand across that street. And we got across that street safely, of course, and we got to the other side. Eric looked up at me and he said, I hanged on, didn't I, Dad? <laughs> and it's true, we hang on to God's hand, but you know what's really amazing is that he's hanging on to our hand. If it would have just been up to Eric, he probably would have slipped loose, but because Dad was holding on, it was a place of safety. And so it is with God. Yes, we are holding on to Him, and that's incredible, but what's really amazing is He's holding on to us. And when we go through hard times, and sometimes even horrible times, God will not let us go. You can count on Him, for sure. That is the source of your strong confidence. And when you have that kind of confidence, those of you who are fathers, that will give to your children a place of security. And in fact, when they're very young, until they get to that point where they can understand God and have a relationship with Him, you, Dad, are kind of, well, you're the standard for God in their life. And what they first learn to think about God is often colored by what they experience. God. God is holding on to you with his right hand. And that is why you can have strong confidence no matter what problems or challenges may life throw at you or at your family. Now fear of the Lord is the great destroyer of fear. The Lord says, I will never leave you or forsake you. So you may confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. That's Hebrews 13. Man, Proverbs 14, 26 is true. The fear of the Lord is God's plan for your strong confidence. So fear to dishonor him, fear to distrust him, fear to disappoint him. Fearing your circumstances, on the other hand, means that you are putting your assessment of the situation above God. Because he says he can handle it. He says he will help you. He is smarter than you are. He is stronger than you are. And he is more generous than you are. So, fear to not trust God. The Bible says, God acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Isaiah 64. He will solve the problem. He will rescue the family. He will take care of your children. He will meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Gentlemen, if you will be a daddy with strong confidence in the promises of your heavenly father, your children, your grandchildren, will have a safe refuge. Today, as we come to the table of our Lord, I encourage you, fathers, but all of you who know Jesus as Savior, drink deeply of the cup of communion. Confident in your Heavenly Father who loves you very, very much and who gave His Son for you. We pray. Father, thank you that in the fear of the Lord there is strong confidence. There is a safe and secure refuge. 
And as we find our confidence in you, you promise that our children will have a place of safety. Help us to pass on to our kids and our grandkids the confidence that we have in your son, Jesus. And as we come to this table of communion, as we partake of the bread and of the cup, as we remember that Jesus gave his body and shed his blood for us, help us to experience your grace so that we will know confidently that you love us and will never let us go. We pray in Jesus' name.